All right, here we're going to look at a little question related to a sequence. Um, and in this case, we're going to ask ourselves, is the sequence negative 1 to the n times 1 over n squared, is that increasing, decreasing, or neither? Um, also, you know, is it bounded above, below, both, or neither? So, you know, there's lots of different ways to argue these or, you know, address these types of questions. I think this one's kind of easy to just plug in numbers and see what's going to happen. I mean, you know, this negative 1 to the n, basically as n increases, all that's going to do, it's going to make the sequence uh, just alternate in sign. Well, that to me makes me automatically feel like it can't be strictly increasing or decreasing because it looks like it's going to bounce back and forth between, you know, negative, positive, negative, positive. Um, so it's, it's not strictly getting bigger or smaller. The 1 over n squared, if you think about that, this just gets closer to 0 as n increases. You know, so, and you can even plug in numbers. If we plug in 1, you know, we would get negative 1 times uh, 1 over 1, so we would get negative 1. If we plug in 2, we would get a positive 1 over 2 squared or a fourth. If we plug in 3, we would get a negative 1 over uh, 3 squared, which would give us negative 1 over 9. And then positive, again, if you plug in 4, we'll get 16, etc. So it's, you know, it's clear to see that this is neither uh, increasing or decreasing. You know, and again, you're starting like at negative 1, and then you're up at a 4th, a negative 9th, a 16th. But if you think about it, um, okay, so it certainly looks like to me it is bounded. It's going to be bounded to me both above and below. And to me, it looks like it's going to be bound, bounded below. You could say it's bounded below by negative 1. And then it's bounded above. It looks like the biggest positive number you would ever get out of our sequence um, would be positive 1 fourth. So it's bounded below and above um, by both of these numbers. Again, uh, if a sequence is neither uh, strictly increasing or decreasing and is bounded above and below, um, you know, in that case, you can't really say for sure that it converges or not. Um, the question didn't ask, does the sequence converge, but we could always address it. I think it's pretty easy to see that it's going to converge to zero. And again, in that case, we could use the absolute value theorem. So remember, the absolute value theorem, we just take the absolute value of the sequence. Um, in that case, if we take the absolute value, uh, the negative 1 to the n would go away. We would just be left with 1 over n squared if we simplify this. And certainly, as n goes to infinity, um, this limit equals 0. And therefore, by the absolute value theorem, uh, the original sequence, in this case, uh, in, you know, this se particular sequence, it would also converge to 0. So again, lots of different ways to kind of justify these. Um, a lot of times, to me, with these, you know, it's, it's to get a solution, a lot of times you can just plug in values and get a feel for what's going on.